The journey to unlock the secrets of the Neanderthal genome began with a quest for the most suitable DNA samples, a quest that led scientists to the Vindia Cave in Croatia. Nestled in the picturesque landscape of Europe, Vindija Cave had long been a treasure trove for archaeologists, harboring clues to our ancient past. Within this cave, amid the remnants of a bygone era, lay the key to unraveling the genetic blueprint of the Neanderthals. It was here that a team of researchers, led by the renowned paleogeneticist Svante Paebo from the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology, set their sights. Their mission was challenging, to extract viable DNA from Neanderthal fossils. These fossils, having withstood the test of time, were precious and rare, and the DNA within them had degraded over tens of thousands of years. The task was akin to finding a needle in a haystack, with the added complexity of the needle being fragmented into countless pieces. The selection of Vindia Cave was strategic. The cave had yielded well-preserved Neanderthal bones and teeth, offering a glimmer of hope in what was an arduous task. The bones from this cave were not just fossils. They were the last remnants of a species that had once walked the earth alongside our own ancestors. Handling these bones required a reverence for the past and a meticulous scientific approach. In the sterile confines of their laboratory, far from the cave's natural tranquility, the researchers began the delicate process of extracting DNA. They carefully selected fragments of bone, each piece holding the potential to unlock secrets that had been silent for millennia. The bones were ground into powder, a process that released the ancient DNA from its calcified prison. The extraction was a painstaking process, fraught with the risk of contamination. Modern human DNA, omnipresent in the environment, posed a significant threat capable of overshadowing the faint signals of the Neanderthal DNA. The scientists operated in clean room conditions, taking every precaution to ensure the purity of the samples. The work carried out with the Vindia cave samples was not just a scientific endeavor, it was a journey back in time, a quest to connect with a lost lineage. The fragments of bone, so carefully extracted and analyzed, were more than just archaeological artifacts. They were the last echoes of a species that had once shared the earth with us, a species whose story was intertwined with our own. As the researchers progressed, piece by piece, fragment by fragment, the Neanderthal genome slowly began to reveal its secrets. With each discovery, the ancient DNA from Vindija Cave provided a clearer picture of who the Neanderthals were, how they lived, and how they were related to us. It was a testament to the perseverance of the scientists and the enduring legacy of the Neanderthals, whose genetic whispers had traversed the chasm of time to reach us. The DNA extraction process undertaken by Svante Paebo and his team was a pioneering effort in the field of ancient DNA research, especially in the context of Neanderthal genetics. This intricate process involved several key steps and utilized cutting-edge technologies and methodologies. The team's work was conducted in specialized laboratories designed to minimize the risk of modern human DNA contamination. These ultra-clean labs are akin to clean rooms used in semiconductor manufacturing or space missions. They maintain strict air filtration systems, use UV light sterilization, and require researchers to wear full-body suits, masks, and gloves. This environment is critical because even a tiny amount of DNA from a modern human could significantly contaminate the ancient samples, leading to skewed results. The team predominantly chose dense bones, such as the petrous part of the temporal bone near the inner ear, as these are known to yield higher DNA concentrations. These bones are less porous compared to other skeletal parts, offering better protection against environmental contamination and DNA degradation. The selected bone fragments were then meticulously cleaned. This involved mechanical removal of the surface to eliminate any potential contaminants that might have adhered to the bone over millennia. The cleaned bone was then ground into fine powder. Grinding the bone increases the surface area, making it more likely to extract sufficient quantities of DNA. This powder is where the ancient DNA, preserved over tens of thousands of years, is most concentrated. From the bone powder, DNA was extracted using a series of chemical treatments. This process typically involves demineralization, removing the mineral matrix of the bone to release the DNA, 
followed by the use of a solution that breaks down proteins and liberates the DNA. The DNA is then separated from the solution, often through centrifugation and binding to a silica column. This method allows the DNA to be selectively captured while impurities are washed away. Ancient DNA presents unique challenges. It is not only highly fragmented but also chemically modified, making it difficult to work with. The team used various techniques to repair and reconstruct these fragmented and damaged strands. Enzymatic treatments were used to repair the DNA to the extent possible. The process also involved amplifying the extracted DNA through polymerase chain reaction, PCR, to generate sufficient material for sequencing. Once the DNA was extracted and prepared, it was subjected to sequencing. Given the fragmented nature of ancient DNA, this step required sophisticated sequencing technologies capable of reading short DNA fragments and advanced computational methods to piece these fragments together. The work of Paibo and his team was groundbreaking, not just for the technical prowess it demonstrated, but also for opening a new window into our understanding of Neanderthals and human evolution. Their meticulous approach in extracting and handling ancient DNA set a precedent in paleogenetics, enabling future research into the genetic history of ancient species. The DNA extracted from Neanderthal fossils, as achieved by Svante Paebo's team, was typically highly fragmented and chemically modified. These issues are inherent in ancient DNA due to the long-term effects of environmental factors such as temperature, moisture, and microbial activity. The initial step in purification involved removing contaminants that might have been co-extracted with the DNA. These contaminants could be from the soil, the surrounding environment where the fossils were found, or even chemicals used during the extraction process. Techniques like gel electrophoresis were used to separate DNA from these contaminants based on size and charge. The DNA was then concentrated and further cleaned using various chemical methods. Specialized kits and protocols were employed to selectively bind DNA to a medium, like silica membranes, allowing impurities to be washed away. This step was crucial to increase the purity and concentration of the ancient DNA for subsequent analysis. Ancient DNA is not only fragmented but also chemically altered, primarily due to demination, a process where cytosine C bases in the DNA are converted to uracil U and adenine A to hypoxanthine. These changes can lead to misreading the DNA sequence during amplification and sequencing. To mitigate this, the team used enzymatic repair protocols. Enzymes like uracil DNA glycosylase, UDG, and endonuclease the 8 were used, which recognize and remove the incorrect bases like uracil and correct errors in the DNA backbone. This step is akin to editing a corrupted text to restore its original form as much as possible. After repair, the DNA underwent polymerase chain reaction, PCR amplification. This step was delicate because PCR can amplify both the ancient DNA and any potential contaminating modern DNA. To reduce errors, the team used primers and conditions optimized for ancient DNA, which is typically shorter and more degraded than modern DNA. Post repair and amplification, the DNA was prepared for sequencing. The repaired and amplified DNA fragments were converted into a library suitable for high throughput sequencing technologies. This involved attaching adapters to the DNA fragments and ensuring they were in a form compatible with the sequencing machines. Advanced technologies played a crucial role in this process. High-throughput sequencing technologies, capable of sequencing millions of short DNA fragments simultaneously, were essential. Equally important were the bioinformatic tools used to analyze and piece together these fragments into a coherent genetic sequence. The work on Neanderthal DNA purification and repair exemplifies the intersection of molecular biology, biochemistry, and computational science. It highlights the remarkable ability of scientists to reconstruct the genetic blueprint of an extinct species from fragments of ancient material, allowing us to peer into the genetic makeup of our closest extinct relatives. The computational analysis stage in the decoding of the Neanderthal genome was a crucial and complex phase where the sequenced DNA fragments were transformed into a comprehensive genetic picture. 
this process hinged on advanced computational methods and sophisticated bioinformatics techniques. After the Neanderthal DNA had been sequenced, the resulting data comprised millions of short DNA fragments. These fragments represented a jigsaw puzzle of genetic information that needed to be pieced together. The challenge was not just in the volume of data, but also in the fact that these fragments were often highly degraded and represented only partial sequences of the original genome. A key step in the computational analysis was aligning these fragmented sequences with a reference genome, typically the modern human genome. This step was critical because it provided a framework against which the Neanderthal DNA could be compared and assembled. The human genome, being closely related and well-mapped, served as an ideal template. The alignment process involved finding regions in the Neanderthal DNA that closely matched or overlapped with the human genome. Given the evolutionary closeness of humans and Neanderthals, many sequences were expected to be similar. Bioinformatics tools were used to sift through the data, identifying these overlapping regions. Equally important was the identification of sequences that were unique to Neanderthals. These differences could be indicative of genetic traits or adaptations specific to Neanderthals. Due to the fragmented nature of ancient DNA, there were gaps and incomplete segments in the sequence data. Bioinformatics algorithms had to account for these gaps using statistical models to predict and fill in missing data where possible. Ancient DNA comes with a higher rate of sequencing errors due to chemical modifications over time. Computational analysis had to differentiate between true genetic variations and sequencing errors, a process that required sophisticated error correction algorithms. Handling and processing the enormous data sets generated by sequencing required significant computational power and storage capacity. This necessitated the use of high-performance computing systems and efficient data storage solutions. Various bioinformatics tools and software packages were used in this process. These included programs for sequence alignment, genome assembly, error correction, and data visualization. The selection of tools depended on the specific requirements of the analysis, such as the need for handling large data sets or the ability to detect subtle genetic variations. The end result of this computational analysis was a comprehensive assembly of the Neanderthal genome. This genome provided unprecedented insights into the genetic makeup of Neanderthals, their evolutionary relationship with modern humans, and the genetic contributions they have made to contemporary human populations. The computational analysis phase in the Neanderthal Genome Project is a testament to the power of bioinformatics in bridging the gap between raw genetic data and meaningful biological insights. It transformed fragments of ancient DNA into a coherent genetic story, shedding light on our closest extinct relatives and enriching our understanding of human evolution. Over time, DNA undergoes chemical changes. One common modification is demination, where cytosine, C, changes to uracil, U, and adenine, A, to hypoxanthine. These changes can lead to incorrect base pairing during DNA replication, resulting in substitutions in the sequence DNA. Ancient DNA is highly fragmented. This fragmentation can lead to incomplete sequences and difficulties in accurately piecing together the genome. Bioinformatics tools can identify patterns typical of ancient DNA damage, such as the increased frequency of certain types of substitutions, for example, C to T changes due to demination. One effective method for identifying errors is to sequence multiple copies of the same DNA fragments and then compare the sequences. Consistencies across different copies can indicate a true sequence, while inconsistencies might suggest an error. By aligning the ancient DNA sequences with a reference genome, such as the modern human genome, scientists can identify anomalies that might be errors. Sequences that don't align well or show unusual variations can be flagged for further inspection. Statistical models are used to predict and correct errors. These models can take into account the known chemical changes that occur in ancient DNA and the likelihood of different types of errors. Despite advances in automation, manual inspection by experts remains an important part of error correction. Specialists can review the data, especially in critical or ambiguous regions, to make informed decisions on the validity of certain sequences. Error correction in ancient DNA analysis is not foolproof. Some modifications may not be detectable, and the highly degraded nature of the material 
can limit the extent to which errors can be corrected. Additionally, the distinction between true genetic variations and post-mortem changes can sometimes be ambiguous. In the context of the Neanderthal Genome Project, error correction played a pivotal role in ensuring the accuracy of the final genome assembly. By meticulously addressing the various types of errors, the team led by Svante Peebo was able to construct a more reliable and comprehensive picture of the Neanderthal genome, paving the way for groundbreaking insights into human evolution and the relationship between modern humans and Neanderthals. The comparison and analysis phase of the Neanderthal Genome Project was a pivotal step, illuminating the genetic relationship between Neanderthals, modern humans, and other ancient hominins. This phase involved meticulously contrasting the newly assembled Neanderthal genome with those of modern humans and other ancient genomes to draw out both the shared traits and distinct differences. By comparing the Neanderthal genome with that of modern humans, scientists could identify genetic sequences that were conserved across both species. These shared sequences pointed to a common ancestry and provided insights into genes that have remained relatively unchanged throughout human evolution. The similarities helped in understanding which traits Neanderthals and modern humans might have shared, ranging from physical characteristics to perhaps more subtle attributes like disease, susceptibilities, or metabolic processes. The differences in the genetic sequences were crucial in identifying what made Neanderthals unique. This included variations that could be linked to their distinct physical characteristics, like robust bone structure and possibly to other traits like their cognitive abilities or dietary preferences. Differences also highlighted evolutionary adaptations that Neanderthals might have developed, enabling them to survive in the harsh climates and environments they inhabited. One of the most groundbreaking revelations from the comparison was evidence of interbreeding between Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans. By finding segments of Neanderthal DNA in the modern human genome, particularly in non-African populations, scientists concluded that interbreeding occurred when modern humans migrated and encountered Neanderthals in Europe and Asia. The analysis also helped identify specific genetic contributions from Neanderthals to modern humans. These include genes related to immune response, skin and hair characteristics, and even some affecting behavior aspects. The Neanderthal genome was also compared with other ancient genomes like that of the Denisovans, another extinct hominin species. These comparisons are crucial for understanding the complex web of relationships and interactions among ancient human species. Through these comparisons, scientists could piece together a more comprehensive picture of gene flow among ancient populations, shedding light on human migration patterns and population dynamics throughout prehistory. The outcomes of this comparative analysis have had profound implications for our understanding of human evolution. They have reshaped our knowledge about the interactions between different human species in the ancient world and contributed to a more nuanced understanding of our own genetic heritage. The insights gained from comparing the Neanderthal genome with modern human and other ancient genomes continue to be a rich source of information for anthropologists geneticists, and evolutionary biologists offering an ever-deepening understanding of what it means to be human. A big thanks to all the scientists, and in particular Svante Paibo, for this pioneering work that has helped us learn so much more about Neanderthals and dispel common misconceptions about them as being mere brutes. Please like and subscribe for more such videos.